Thank you, uh, DJ Devin. Um, that's our. Uh, there'll be you'll be hearing some music. So, all right, we're gonna we're gonna begin. Catherine, I'm throwing it over to you. Yeah. So first of all, thank you to everyone who has signed up for the fund intervention and who is making the time on this Tuesday to join us for the first workshop of this new fund intervention season. As some of you who are on the call may know, I did something similar last year, uh, shortly after my book. Power of Fun came out where I interviewed authors that I admired about certain aspects of fun. But this year I wanted to do something different. And one thing I've noticed as I've done a bunch of speaking engagements about fun across the country is that the number one question that people always come up and ask me either during the talk or shortly afterwards is how do we have fun at work? And is it even appropriate to have fun at work? And then also is fun even worth pursuing at work? And I've got some ideas of answers to those questions, but I was hoping in my heart of hearts that I might find some kind of guru figure who could be my fun consultant about the subject of fun at work. So you can imagine my delight, speaking of delights, when a friend introduced me to Paul Charney, who's here with me on screen today, uh, who recently moved to Philadelphia where I live and who actually started a company, Funmentum, Funmentum Labs, that's entirely devoted to harnessing the science and power of fun to create more fun at work and in so doing increase things like creativity and productivity and collaboration. Basically, exactly the person I was hoping to meet. So Paul and I went for a walk a couple of weeks ago. We were talking about all things fun. And I was like, I don't know if I'm going to do this fun intervention this year. I'm kind of feeling tired and burned out. It's been a long couple months. And then had this aha moment that, oh, my God, we could do workshops together where Paul could share some of the things that he and his team do with their professional clients, with our screen life balance and fun community. So that is how we got here today. So I'm going to turn it over to Paul, who is front and center. We've got Devin in the back end who's helping us with tech stuff. And um, hey, yeah, hey. Anyway, so get ready for... <laughs> I don't even know what I, I'm excited. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, thank you, thank you, Catherine, and um, I couldn't be more excited to be here. And thank you for everyone who uh, is attending the fun intervention. And I think it's on us to make sure that this is a fun and engaging uh, uh, 55 minutes or whatever it is now um, of your time. And absolutely right, Catherine uh, has stated that. Um, we and my team has been really focused on how imperative it is to integrate fun and play into work um, because it actually does lead to more creativity, more innovation, but the bigger one and most important one is it actually leads to more connection. Um, it actually leads to how we actually connect at work, how we can get to being our best selves when we work with each other. And that's something that I know in this remote world, Catherine and I have talked endlessly about, like that is one of the biggest challenges right now. How do we find that connection with the people we work with, um, especially if we're not next to them every day? And this is an opportunity to use these tools and the science of fun that actually Catherine's book sort of helped open my mind up to. So I hope all of you have already bought and read that book several times. Um, that that those there are tools and things you can do to bring joy and play and fun to work and that um, all of the science shows it's actually really important to do that and so we're going to start today by actually engaging in some of that and showing you some of the tools we share with people of how to enjoy work more and how to be more creative innovative energized and more connected at work so we are going to be generating ideas and this is a competition. So you will be broken up into teams and you will be staying in those groups for about a, several exercises. So these are your teammates and you'll be trying to come up with a winning idea. So um, that's the competition, you know, and competition actually increases play too. So that's sort of the challenge also gets people really excited and engaged. And we'll, we'll go over some of that. So when you go into your teams, you're gonna introduce yourself and your role at work, what you do at work. Even if you're self-employed, it's okay, just tell us what you do. Um, and you're gonna, this is important, assign a note taker. This is someone who can um, be a, a good, uh, someone who's comfortable typing uh, quickly, as well as sharing their screen with the rest of the group. So let's say there's a group of five or six of you, someone says, oh, you know, I'm totally comfortable being uh, a note taker and sharing my Google Doc with everyone, sharing my screen within this breakout room. Give yourselves a team name. They could be things like the slowest cheetahs, the bang, bang, big brains, the grandmas, doesn't matter. 
There's no, there's no right team name. It's whatever you feel in the moment. And so you have five minutes. The way breakout rooms work is there will be a countdown that starts. So don't leave until the five minutes are up. As we mentioned, this is a competition and we're actually all gonna come to work together to help solve uh, Jonathan's challenge. Um, and Jonathan wrote in ahead of time. Uh, so don't worry, and note takers, a good, good note here. Uh, don't worry about taking notes right now. Um, but uh, Jonathan's challenge was how to get people to feel connected when a lot of their team is remote. Um, that is gonna be the challenge. Um, is Jonathan here? Jonathan I'm here. On. Oh, Jonathan. Um, yeah, thank you for submitting this. I just want to um, take a second and give people a little more context. What, what, is, um, what do you mean by this? How do you get people to feel connected when a lot of the team is remote? I mean, I think it makes sense, but I'm yeah. just curious what, what yeah, you Yeah, so have. I, I was describing some in the breakout room to people that uh, the company I've been at have been for a year and a half. And prior to that, I was at a company for a while. And there I really had built a lot of connections and relationships with people uh, that I worked with, whether they were uh, I saw on a daily basis or saw periodically. And now uh, the team that I'm working with, a lot of them are either remote or hybrid. So I see either periodically or very rarely during the course of the year. So I think it's been a challenge to build those relationships and get to know those people better when we're primarily interacting just on Zoom calls together. That's great. That's, I mean, not great. <laughs> that's not a great thing. <laughs> but um, thank you for sharing that, Jonathan. And that's that's a lot of what we're trying to do here today, Jonathan, because we don't always have the opportunity to see people socially anymore the way we used to. Um, however, there are ways that actually how we work together is as important. And even on these Zoom calls, and that's sort of what we're trying to do a little bit now is introduce some of that fun and play into the work we're actually doing so that that's an opportunity to let more of ourselves come through and feel a little more connected. But it is a big challenge right now. And I know everyone's feeling it. Um, so that's why we're gonna take this on. <laughs> we wanna take this right. on and see if we can come up with ideas for how to, how to help Jonathan's challenge. Um, okay, so what we're gonna do, we're actually gonna go back into our groups. And we're gonna go back into our groups and do a little exercise called worst first. So as a group, we want you to think of some really bad ideas to get to people to feel connected when a lot of the team is remote. Um, what are all of your worst ideas? So for example, create mandatory Saturday morning virtual coffee catch-ups. Oh, that sounds like a terrible idea. Everyone reports on Slack what they're doing every 15 minutes. <laughs> That's another winning idea. So we want you to like, just go share them out loud and number them as you go. So see if you can get to 30 bad ideas on how to solve this problem. So which groups can get uh, the most bad ideas? So note takers, um, share your screen and do your best to capture everyone's idea. So that's, that's the job of the note taker. The other four or five people, just go, just start riffing terrible, terrible ideas. Do any people have any uh, fun, bad ideas you want to share? You can just raise your hand and just let us know. Was there was there something? Was there a bad idea that you're like, okay, that was kind of fun, or I, I kind of appreciate how bad that idea was, or that wasn't even a good idea. That wasn't a bad idea. Okay, uh, Nicole. I think my favorite was Christmas caroling as a team on Zoom. <laughs> that's horrible. That's a horrible that's, idea. <laughs> I love that idea. I think that's fantastic. <laughs> That's great. Um, okay, who who else raised their hand? Um, okay, uh, Katya, am I pronouncing it right? Yeah, my favorite was the idea that you're not allowed to put um, mute on so that we always hear everything going on in the background. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> Just everything, the sirens, everything. Okay, uh, Andrea, or Andrea, I'm sorry. Hi, my favorite was an exercise class on Zoom with all your uh, office and workmates. <laughs> oh my gosh. Mandatory, right? <laughs> I've actually done getting, it before. Getting, <laughs> getting, sweaty, getting sweaty with the team. <laughs> That's good. Um, Rosalind, 
<laughs> okay, yeah, I've actually done the exercise thing on Zoom before at a virtual conference. <laughs> so that, yeah. Um, ours was, I like, we had unhappy hour where you just come and just complain um, and just kind of riff on all the things you don't like. Just unhappy hour. Oh my that God, that sounds like a bonding hour. experience. <laughs> that's genius. Okay, that's fantastic. Um, and thank you, Rosalind. Uh, uh, Anne. Um, we had a uh, critique one another's appearances via Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> That's like the rate my background feature, but worse. I get that sometimes when I do interviews for the book, like I'm like, oh, I wonder if anyone said anything on Twitter. And it's always like, did you see the light switch in the background? And I'm like, oh my God, come on. <laughs> but it's even better if you're critiquing your, like your hair. Especially, it's just like, you're just, yeah, it's a very <laughs> limited thing critiquing uh uh krista uh one that i really liked was bring your mother to work day oh that's actually that's, a great idea that's a great idea <laughs> i love that would you, would, oh my god that's a great idea bring your mom to like work to an to a meeting we just get some new new ideas it's a really good idea um uh ellie uh, we had one that was really about losing our inhibitions. So a not safe for work photo sharing event uh, amongst your colleagues. So you've got to give your, send your, your most NSFW photo around to your colleagues. <laughs> <laughs> just go, just go, just go break, break down all the walls just right away. Um, these are fantastic. These are great. I mean, I, I, there are some sparks in all of these. Um, even Maybe though not the last yeah. one. Maybe not the last one. Okay. What would you say? Oh, I said maybe not the last one, but maybe you see a spark in there. <laughs> I think there probably is a spark. It's about it's about like how do we get? Uh, I mean, you're starting to think about well, if I took that idea and then I couldn't do that exactly, what would I do with it? You know, oftentimes at work we have this pressure of think of the perfect solution to your challenge. Think of it, and the problem with that is it's it allows us to like, it's so hard that it actually allows, fosters this kind of distraction. This is Catherine's other book <laughs> about, oh, I'll just check my phone or my emails. That's an easier dopamine hit. That's the way I'm going to stay engaged in reality. But what if you just made, like we did with coming up with the worst idea, what if you just made your challenge into a little bit of a game? Play with the challenge. Don't just see it as like the pressure of thinking of what is the only right answer, but look at it as an opportunity of like, you know what, I'm just going to mess around right now. I'm going to just like think of like terrible ideas or I'm going to invert it and think of, uh, I'm just going to do the opposite of what it's asking me. That creates more play. And then that creates, I can do that. That's the dopamine hit that you're getting within the work itself, as opposed to being distracted by other things to avoid the this is what we're talking about. Um, okay, so let's move on. Uh, oh, sorry. This is the positive engagement. Dopamine keeps us wanting to stay engaged in what we're duping, doing. Dopamine helps us continue to explore and recognize an idea. So a lot of work is actually getting in touch with our biological needs and our who we are as a, as a person and physically. And so that's always a really, I, I saw a lot of bad ideas about like that Christmas caroling thing. Believe it or not, if you do that, that singing, that other part, that actually will lead to release these other hormones. This will foster some connection and that will actually get you to start thinking of solutions faster. Just throwing that out there. All right, we're moving on to the next exercise which is called Celebrity Idol. So in the chat, just start writing a celebrity um, you admire or inspires you. Um, and it could be, and they could be famous or a celebrity for any amount of reasons. They could be a political figure. They could be a music figure. They could be a movie star. They could, doesn't matter. Oh, okay. This is great. Just keep putting them in wherever that is. Think of, think of one person. Great. And it doesn't matter. Here. If, yeah. I'm seeing a lot of Oprah. I'm seeing Elton John, Dolly Parton, Michelle and Barack Obama. <laughs> Someone wrote Tiger Woods. <laughs> oh, Serena. This is great. Ronnie Lott. Okay. Woo. Patrick Mahomes. Okay. Big week for him. Oh, uh, Jennifer Garner. Okay. Oh, and your dad. That's great. Thank you, Paul. 
Um, oh, we're getting some Super Bowl. Uh, we should say that Paul and I are in Philadelphia right now. So we're in Philadelphia. So we got, we got a lot of Jalen Hurts. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay. This is great. So keep, oh, hi, Connie. Okay. We're right next to um, So I think what we're going to do now is I want you to surprise, what would Oprah do? So I want you to actually, sh you're gonna go back to your groups. Um, and you might be in a new team. We'll, we'll see how it all works, but you should be in the same team. Share your celebrities with your small group, then pick one. So as a group, channel that. And then as a group, you're gonna channel that person and come up with as many ways as you can that they would get people feeling connected as a remote team. For example, if your celebrity of choice is Oprah, you might give out toy cars for joining her virtual happy hour. The goal is quantity. So weird or crazy ideas are encouraged. So um, that's, is that clear? People understand? Just share, the first thing you do, share your celebrities. You as a group will pick which one you're most excited about and then come up with ideas for how that person would solve uh, Jonathan's problem. So, um, should we have one or two people raise their hands? Would that be? Yeah, you can, you can, you can put in that or you can raise your hand sure, uh, and just, oh, okay. Group four, Dolly Land. Um, I lose the chat. Oh, no. Viola Davis. Karaoke would with Dolly Parton songs. Viola Davis would definitely lead an improv exercise. Free music. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Bedazzling a jacket sounds. Oh, everyone, <laughs> love that. We're going to host an office-wide podcast with an employee. And oh my gosh, very cool. Oh, these are great. Everybody gets a journal. <laughs> Lucky fifteens. Okay. Red shirt day. <laughs> oh, these are fantastic. Okay. Oh, boy. oh boy. someone went to the Tiger Woods thing. Okay. So oh, but Michelle happen. Obama, I love that Lita cooking class and shipped ingredients to the team in advance. I've seen organizations do that actually, like a, like a cheese tasting or the, um, actually my daughter's school in the height of the lockdown period when they were all remote, there was a local uh, restaurant that made empanadas and they sent out empanadas where you could go pick up empanada kits and they led a class for everybody to make them together, um, which actually was, was fun. It sounds, it sounds yummy, actually. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Okay, so now um, we're going to thank you for sharing. We're going to move on to the, the next thing. And, and this is just sort of an insight of what the exercise we just did. Channeling someone else actually increases our creativity. So again, that pressure thing is what always drives creativity down, stress, fear, anxiety. But if you have Harvard psychologists prove that donning a mental mask far from their day-to-day identity instantly increased the level of creative solutions. And I'm sure it also increased the um, connection with all of you because you all are assuming someone you're not. So there's this joint sort of thing and, and fun to be had. So um, just a very simple tool if you're ever stuck and want to just sort of enjoy the challenge a little bit more, try on a new hat. That's what we always say, wear a new hat. And it's super important. So and you're suggesting you do that with any situation, right, Paul? Like if you're just trying to come up with something you're stuck on as a team or with your colleagues, just like. Do absolutely. It, it, absolutely. Yeah, Catherine, it, it works as a team. It also works individually. Hmm. So that's um, that's so that's important, right? Like if I'm stuck and I'm like, oh, how do I do this? How do I do this? And then you're sort of like, wait, what would Oprah do? Or what would <laughs> the Lone Ranger do? Sorry. So I'm thinking now with this kid looking. So, um, okay. So we're gonna move on because we're we're we're. I know that people have a, a lot of uh, a time time cop issues. So, um, so I would love if there are no takers. If there's a chance, people could just quickly paste your team name and all the raw notes into the chat. Like every everything you. If you haven't been writing in the chat, like let's say you were writing on a Google Doc or something, um, see if you can just drop all those notes in there right now, really quick, all the note takers. Um, so we can all start seeing and, and, and that there's a reference and you can see because we're, we're coming up to um, the, next, the next exercise. Um, uh, just keep doing that. Devin, should we move on to the, okay, great. 
You can just scroll through the chat and look some of the, yeah, just look, I'm really enjoying these ideas. They're fantastic. Yeah, they're, they're amazing. But I want to use that as reference for what's going to happen now, or maybe you don't even need it, but write out your favorite idea on your own. Consider all the ideas you just heard, either from your small group or your whole, or the whole group. And now think of one final idea for our challenge. Get people to feel connected when a lot of the team is remote. And so give your idea a title, such as, I don't know, weekly walk and talks, what is thing, or Christmas caroling. <laughs> um, so feel free, feel free to scroll through the chat, take a moment, and it's not stealing to use another person's idea as inspiration. This is how collaboration works. This is, we're doing it right now. So I want you to just take a moment and write it down on your own. Devin, just to get clarity, this is just something they're writing on their own for a second, right? That's right, not in chat. You're just take, find your own notepad and just write it down. And at the end, whoever wants to submit their idea to Jonathan, uh, can, but not everybody's going to. So we don't have time to hear a hundred ideas. Oh, we love to read yeah. them. So you should put them in the chat if you, uh, come. yeah. But basically, we're trying to look at, uh, all, as Paul was saying, that so many of these ideas, even if they're branded as the worst to begin with, have a seed of something that actually could be great. Could really. So I'm going to play some, I'm going to play some music for three minutes. And you're going to have three minutes to consider all the ideas you heard today and think of your favorite. And then if you want to submit it to the competition, you can. Okay, I'm playing music right now. So if you want to uh, raise your hand in the Zoom chat, um, it's time to share our ideas. Yeah. And the winner will be chosen by Jonathan. So click raise your hand in Zoom if you want to share your idea. And to do that, that's with the reactions tab and then click raise hand. And... Um, any idea that is shared out loud will get submitted to the competition for the winner. And I'm actually going to bring a doc out. Oops. <laughs> I'm going to bring a doc out here and I'm going to write in the ideas as they come up. So uh, why don't we start with Deborah? Hello. <clears throat> so the idea is a weekly DJ. So each person creates a playlist for the week that everyone can listen to. So you can share some of your favorite music. Since most people listen to work, music at work, we're all listening to different things. So perhaps I could bring people closer together and they'll discover a new song they never heard. That is awesome, Deb Kelson. You know right. it. Bring it. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Okay. <laughs> um, next is Rachel. Okay, um, each person prepares one minute long or even 30 seconds of a few of the favorite places that they have in their town. So it sort of introduces you to where they live, you know, showing some photos and a couple of favorite places. That's awesome. Just getting to know where the people are. Mm -hmm. Also, then if you are in the same place, you maybe could meet up and visit some of them, like new mm -hmm. hidden spots. That's great. But beyond the Zoom window, which is nice. <laughs> um, Jonah. My idea is to, at the start of your meeting, have like a quick theme or something that you're asking, like what's a book that you've read recently or what's a project you're working on outside of work so that you have a personal connection with uh, your coworkers and you're not solely focused on just we have this agenda we need to crank through. That's great. That's good. More, yeah. <laughs> What's fueling my brain? <laughs> um, perfect. Uh, Beth. I loved the, what would Oprah do? And as I was reading through, I thought all of the people they that were chosen were had really interesting and different takes. So I'm thinking what I would do is have my team each pick somebody around what would that person do and then on a rotating basis do one thing that they've set the stage for what that would be so it's a meta version of the exercise oh so you'd actually do it oh I love that like have yeah like if I picked Oprah and then my team member picked Elton John and the next person picked you know Batman whatever that's awesome that's great awesome uh Emma or did I skip, did I skip it? No. Uh, Emma? Yeah. 
yeah. Jesse, you, know you got Jesse in the middle there at least. Oh, yeah. Oh, Should same. I defer to Jesse? Uh, sure, Jesse. <laughs> Okay, um, along the same lines of Jonah is like kind of showing people other sides of yourself, doing some kind of like show and tell or even at like a pet showcase, I feel like would be fun to kind of show in live and then maybe some pictures of your pet and some cute stories. That's it's awesome. a great variation on the not suitable for work photograph thing. It's like, yes, yes, right? it is. Yeah, it, it was, there was something there. There was something there. Yeah. Um, okay. You're, you're, you've been primed, so now, now, sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, so my idea is called the Patch Adams, as inspired by the Robin Williams group. And um, I think that uh, as a team collectively, um, it would be a wonderful idea to fulfill some slightly grandiose wish for each team member for their birthday. So if you're familiar with the film, he does this for patients in a hospital. The most classic one is a pool full of spaghetti noodles <laughs> for this wonderful old lady and it makes her so happy. So I think doing finding a way to do that for your team members would be fantastic. That's awesome. That's great. Got a little and, uh, on that one. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, last, All right, last, last one. one. Oh, final entry. Oh, how you doing? I actually have two, if that's okay. All right, let's, let's, let's hear them. The virtual, sure. the virtual pub quiz, where we just, so, somebody in the team has to, you know, put together like a quiz with questions. And, and then uh, the other one was just virtual jamming with instruments, just getting together and playing instruments together. Ah, okay. Nice. So the, the, All right. The, 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 All right, here we go. Uh, Jonathan, do you know which uh, which one is your winner? You don't have to announce it yet. By the way, those uh, are all fantastic. So thank you everyone for sharing. Thank you so yes. much for sharing. Yeah, yeah, I, I have one that I'm favoring. Okay, all right, great. So now I'm just gonna go back to the slideshow. And of course, we're gonna do this part here. The sound cue might be a little loud. So if you have headphones, it'd be careful. <laughs> all right, just so, just be warned. Yeah, here we go. All right, Jonathan, who's the winner? All right, I don't know. I forgot the person's name, but the one who suggested the uh, the weekly DJ. Oh, yeah. Deborah Kelson. Oh, I'll definitely come back next week. The bar has been raised. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. Um, and Deborah, what was your team? Oh, we were the, um, oh, we, had, we were the, I forget the first part. It was work hard. The Funstigators. The Funstigators, work hard, play harder. Yes. Congratulations work. to the Funstigators. Nice. <laughs> yes. Thank oh you. <laughs> um, yes. So this is um, we want to put we put in the chat um, to join the Funmentum uh, mailing list um, and receive the newsletter. So if you do that, that'd be great. Um, thank you everyone for coming. I know it's it's we're up against it. Um, and uh, and I think also on the next slide, you can uh, uh, get a little, uh, next week is a different session. So it's not each, each week in February is a new session, different tools, different challenge, same time. So um, really, really excited. We have, we just have like a, 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 just a huge vat of ideas and tools and exercises that we want to share with Catherine and, and all of you. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for coming. And I would say to everyone, uh, Paul has to jump. I'm going to stay on for a couple of minutes with Devin. If you want to talk, I was actually curious if anyone wants to drop in anything they've already done at work that has solved Jonathan's problem. They've already doing things that have achieved a sense of connection over Zoom because presumably some of you already have some ideas. The other thing I was going to say is to just check in with yourself about how you feel right now compared to how you did an hour ago, because if you're anything like me and me having written the book at the beginning, anytime there's like, it's breakout rooms, part of me clenches up inside and I'm like, oh my God, what the hell did I get myself into? But you all stuck it out. And just the experience of interacting with people, I'm assuming sharing some laughs with your people in the breakout rooms, just notice what a difference that made for yourself in this moment. And yeah, we're going to, I'd also challenge everybody, including Jonathan, to try out one of those ideas or perhaps your own idea between now and next week, report back to us either live in the call next week 
or you can respond to my newsletters and just let us know. We might not be able to respond personally to everything, but we do read everything. Um, but yeah, I want to thank everybody. And if anyone wants to stick around, you can, you know, actually ask some informal questions and we will make some version of this available next week. But in the meantime, please invite your friends and your colleagues to join us next time because the more the merrier. And if you get more people in your workplace to participate in one of the sessions, you'll have a better chance of getting buy-in to actually try some of the ideas. So thank you everyone yes. so much. And thank you, Paul and Devin. Um, and thank you, Christy, on the back end too.